What's happening everyone? It's Rob from the Basement Bike Shop, video two of our left hand drive conversion. And in this video, we're gonna be switching our three piece crank from right hand drive to left hand drive and then putting the whole bike back together. In the last video, we removed the back wheel and then removed the driver and switched it from right hand drive to left hand drive and then put the whole thing back together. If you'd like to check out that video, you can click on the link or there'll be a link in the description. The first thing we need to do is remove the three piece crank. And without a bike stand, I found that the best method to do this is to put the bike upside down and prop up the seat. And then you're gonna wanna put on knee pads with a hard shell. And you'll see why in a minute. When removing the crank, the first thing I do is loosen my sprocket bolt slightly. The reason I do that is I just want everything to have a little bit of wiggle room as I'm hammering the crank out. Next, we're going to remove the crank bolt from whichever side we're going to remove. With a two-piece crank, you're limited to one side. After that, we need to punch out the spindle. Now, if you don't have a crank arm remover slash setter tool, then I usually use an extension with a socket, I think I have an 11 millimeter on here. It really works good on the 19 millimeter spindle. I put my knees with my knee pads against the frame. That way, as I'm hammering on the extension, there's no chance that I'll accidentally bend the frame as opposed to if you had it laying on a workbench. Now, if it's a factory install like mine, it's gonna take some effort to get it out. Um, I still advise just doing little hits, not really big hits, and just doing a lot of them, you know, and just being patient. Here I switch to a wheelbarrow axle. It's just something that I can pound on without wrecking my sockets. And then once you get the one arm off, you're going to pull off the drive side cone spacers and other spacers. Get the spindle flush with the bearing and then I use a wooden dowel to punch the spindle through the rest of the way. That's all the further you need to take that apart. Now when making the switch, you're not just going to switch the sprocket and the bolt. You're going to switch all of the spacers and cone spacers also. Um, for this crank, we don't have any spacers. We just have our cone spacers. Drive side cone spacer is always shorter than the non-drive side cone spacer. We're going to put our sprocket on the left side. Slide in our adapter. And then we're going to put in our sprocket bolt. We're not going to tighten it down all the way yet. Just snug it up so that everything has that little bit of wiggle room and nothing binds when we put the crank back on. After that, I'm going to remove the chain because it has to be switched to the other side. And for this, we need a chain tool or chain breaker. I have the Park CT 3.2, which allows the plate on the bottom to slide all the way against the block. Um, other chain tools like the Odyssey, the block actually will um, screw inward against the chain, which is also good. And then all you're going to do is push the pin through. I like to leave it hang just a little bit. That way you don't have any loose pieces. And I like to have it just to the inside a little bit so that when I put it back together, it kind of hooks into itself and stays. And then you're not trying to hold two things at once while you're trying to put the pin back in. And now it's time to slide our crank back in. We have the sprocket and adapter on the left side with our cone spacer and any spacers that were on the other side before. 
Line up your center tube spacer with your finger from the right side. And then we're just going to tap it in with a piece of wood and a hammer. Double check that our frame is symmetrical and our arm doesn't hit or our sprocket or the sprocket bolt. And then to the right side, we're gonna put a little grease on the splines so that the arm comes off nice and easy when we take it off the next time. Put our non-drive side cone spacer on and then any spacers, if you have them that came off of that the other side, the non-drive side. And then line our arm up um, with the 48 spline, it's probably the hardest, so just take your time, look at it from a couple different angles, make sure that you have it on exactly parallel to the other arm. And then we're going to take a hammer and a block and tap it on against our knee just to get it set. Now you're not going to be able to tap it on this way. Your knee is not strong enough. Mine is, but for everybody else, I invented this. It's called the Rob Brace. And I'll tell you how to make it. You're going to cut a 2x4 to about 3 to 4 feet, depending on how far away from the wall you're working. And then you're going to write Rob Brace on it, patent pending. And then we're going to block up against the wall so that we can get the height of the Rob Brace perfect with the height of the arm and not just anywhere on the arm exactly where the bolt is now this is going to hold the crank sturdy and when you put pressure against it you're not putting pressure against the frame you're putting pressure against the other side of the crank so the frame is not taking any kind of stress at all and then you can really beat on it if you need to and if after you're done, your spindle is to one side more than the other, the Rob Brace patent pending works for that too. You put it against the side that you want the spindle to go to, and then use your hammer and socket with extension or wheelbarrow axle to punch it to the other side. And now we're ready to put our crank bolts back in. Now, if you take your crank bolts in and out a lot, um, I would advise putting a little bit of Loctite on there. I use the blue stuff, never use the red. I used the red Loctite once. I had to sell that crank with that bike. And then after you get the bolts tight, we're going to tighten up our sprocket bolt. And then we'll put our back wheel on. You don't have to tighten it up yet. Just uh, hand tighten it so the wheel stays there. And then we're going to hook our brakes back up just like we took it off. Um, if both sides come out, hook one side in first, then squeeze the brake pads together, and then hook the other side in. Next, we're going to put the chain on. Now I like to just lay it over the top and bring both ends to just after the sprocket. It's the most room for a chain tool to fit into. You're going to line the two pieces up together and then screw in your chain tool. And take your time doing this. Make sure you got her lined up perfect. Because you can easily wreck a chain by pushing a pin in wrong. Or snap a chain tool pin. Done that before too. Then we're going to put our chain on. Just put one side on the sprocket and pedal forward. And then to get the tight spot out of the chain where we push it together. You're going to wiggle it back and forth laterally. And by doing that, it'll just open up that spot a little bit more. 
And then it's time to set our chain tension and crank our axle nuts down. Now as you tighten up your chain tensioner, you can see that the chain tightens up. And then you tighten up your non-drive side chain tensioner to bring your wheel back over. And then check your chain tension as you spin it. Um, you want your chain tension perfect in the tight, tightest spot on your sprocket. You don't want it totally tight. You're just going to wreck your bearings. Um, you want some movement in it, but you don't want it to hit your frame. And then tighten it down when you're done. Now, if you don't have chain tensioners, what I do is I tighten down the non-drive side anywhere, and then I grab on and pull it over. And you can see how it tightens the chain up. And then I hold it with that hand and then tighten down my drive side, checking my chain tension. And then once I got it perfect, I loosen the left side or non-drive side back up adjust my tire straight, and then tighten my non-drive side back up. And that wraps up our left-hand drive conversion. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button, support the cause, and I'll keep these videos coming. Some upcoming videos are going to be the removal and installation of individual parts in step-by-step -step detail. We're going to build a BMX manual machine and a manual machine 2.0 aka mega manual machine i'm going to show you what's inside my street riding backpack and what you should have in yours and much much more if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos you can leave a comment below or you can email me thanks a lot